The first story today I'm super excited to talk about. Jeffrey Hinton just won the Nobel Prize in physics. If you're not aware of who Jeffrey Hinton is, he is widely regarded as the godfather of artificial intelligence. Basically, if not for him, we wouldn't have AI as it is today. Let's just read a little bit about him. In 1986, he co-authored a highly influential paper on the backpropagation algorithm for training multi-layer neural networks. He co-invented Boltzmann machines, a type of stochastic recurrent neural network. He developed techniques like distributed representations, time-delayed neural networks, and mixtures of experts. In 2012, recently, he and his students created AlexNet, a breakthrough in image recognition that significantly outperformed previous systems. In 2018, he won the Turing Award. He won the Honda Prize in 2019, the Royal Medal in 2022, and just now, the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2024. But Jeffrey Hinton is also quite nervous about AI. In May 2023, Hinton publicly announced his resignation from Google, citing concerns about the risks of AI technology. He's become an outspoken critic of the potential dangers of AI, expressing worries about its ability to generate convincing misinformation and its potential military applications. And in response to the phone call about the Nobel Prize, he said, I'm in a cheap motel in California, which doesn't have good internet or phone connection. I was going to have an MRI scan today, but I'll have to cancel that. So big congrats to Jeffrey Hinton. Well-deserved, absolute legend in the AI field. Next, Meta released an absolutely stunning text to movie product. I covered it in the live stream on Friday, but this is absolutely incredible. And it's not just text to video. Let's just read a little bit about it. First of all, movie gen video, so that is text to video, is a 30 billion parameter transformer model. So a few things here. One, most likely it's going to be open source because it's coming from AI and meta. And two, it's 30 billion parameters, which means it could actually fit on consumer grade hardware, which is incredible. Next, it also has a 13 billion parameter text to audio, which is really, really nice. Now, what's super interesting about it is you can load up a movie and it will give you audio, sound effects, music that line up perfectly well with the video. It's super impressive. Here's an example of a generated video with generated audio. Let's take a look. Next, you can also do precise video editing. So you could basically just describe what you want changed and it will change it. And then you could also simply take a picture of yourself and put it into a video or prompt it to create a video based on your likeness. And I can't imagine any way that that would be abused. So here's an example of editing video with text. So we have the original video here. Then we simply say, add blue pom-poms to the hands. We say, turn it into a cactus desert. And we can also say, turn it into a running inflatable dinosaur. Here's another impressive one. Here's the original video, dress them up as penguins from the Victorian era, add beach umbrellas, and then make it look like a drawing. All of these are incredibly impressive. I'll drop links to all of these in the description below. And then to produce those personalized videos, you take a picture of yourself and then prompt it and it will insert you into the video. It is so, so cool. So here's another one. This never happened, simply a 2D image and then the prompt and there it is, there's the video. So really cool, it's not out quite yet. They're still doing some testing. Hopefully this is not a Sora where we basically will never get it, but I hope we're gonna get it soon. Speaking of text to video, we have another one. Halo, Halo AI, I don't know how to pronounce that, but Halo AI, has now released their image to video feature. And you can use it right now, right away. Let's look just at a few examples. So you could definitely see a few mistakes here and there, but overall the consistency, the physics, they look pretty darn good. Here's the prompt, a very, very long prompt in fact. Let's look at another example. So here we go. I mean, this honestly could be a Pixar movie easily. And this really shows what's gonna be possible with movie creation, television show creation, all basically entertainment creation in the very near future. 
So check it out. Hello, 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 hello AI. I'll just drop it in the description. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Vulture. Reap the benefits of the world's largest independent cloud provider when you bring your GPU workloads over to Vulture. They have the latest NVIDIA GPUs spanning 32 locations across six continents. Vulture delivers industry-leading price to performance and serious accessibility and reliability. Vulture's global, fully composable cloud infrastructure moves your applications closer to your users and frees you from vendor lock-in, allowing you to bring your own network Working and database solutions. And if you need to scale beyond just a single cluster, Vulture's Kubernetes engine allows you to take full control over your deployment, offering up a 100% free control plane. So if you're tired of waiting for GPUs from other providers, make sure to use Vulture. You can deploy at any scale immediately, and they have H100s, L40s, and more available right now. And you can get a fraction of a card or fully dedicated bare metal systems, which gives you full control over your hardware and your throughput. They also have one-click installation of all the applications you might need for advanced machine learning workloads, allowing you to get up and running in minutes, not hours. So experience the Vulture difference. Don't get bogged down by severe wait times or limited locations. Try it free today with a $300 credit for your first 30 days when you visit getvulture.com slash Berman. And make sure to use code Berman300 at checkout to get that credit. Thanks again to Vulture for sponsoring this video. Next, we have two brand new incredible models. First, an open source model by NVIDIA. This is an open, massive model, multimodal, that can rival GPT-4. The model is called NVLM, and I actually haven't tested it yet. Do you want me to test it? Let me know. So we introduce NVLM 1.0, a family of frontier class, multimodal, large language models that achieve state-of-the-art results on vision language tasks. So here is an example. So first, picture of Jensen. Who is this person in the image? Jensen Huang. Now. One interesting thing is a lot of models will just refuse to do identification tasks. The Pixtral model did it really well, although Llama 3.2 refused to identify Bill Gates's picture. But obviously NVLM, totally willing to do it. So here's one, explain why the meme is funny. Here's the abstract, here's the paper, and there it is, the explanation. What is the difference between the left, middle, and right object in the image, different types of chips, all the way to write code based on the provided pseudo code written just in messy writing. And then we have actual code to implement it right there. The model demonstrates versatile capabilities in various multimodal tasks by jointly utilizing OCR reasoning, localization, common sense, world knowledge, and coding ability. This is an all-in-one model. I'm so excited to test it out. So we get the code, we get the weights, we get a paper, we get the benchmarks. NVIDIA absolutely crushed it with this release. Thank you to NVIDIA. That is so awesome. I will be testing it soon. And for the next story, we have a new model from Liquid AI. I've been hearing about Liquid AI for a while, but only rumblings about it. And apparently it's from a team out of MIT, and people have been saying this is really the next frontier of models, but let's take a look. So with this little graphic, we can see here are all the models and it comes in a family of different models, LFM 1B, 1 billion, 3 billion, and 40 billion mixture of experts. And all the models across the board beat all the other models that they have on this benchmark. Now they're calling these the liquid foundational models, a new generation of generative AI models built from first principles. It comes in 1 billion, 3 billion, and 40 billion, the 40 billion being a mixture of experts, and maintains smaller memory footprint and more efficient inference. So you can try it today on the Liquid Playground, Lambda, Perplexity Labs, and Cerebrus Inference. And as we can see for the 1.3 billion parameter model, it outperforms Llama 3.2, but it does have only a 32K context window. Now moving up the 3 billion parameter version, as we can also see, it outperforms essentially all the other models in its size class. Then at the 40 billion, let's compare it to Mixtral, Quen 2, Gemma 2, Yi 1.5, Llama 3.1, and as we can see, the model performs extraordinarily well. But where do these models really shine? And that is in the memory footprint. As we can see, the 
inference memory footprint is much lower for the LFMs compared to the other models on this chart. Now, they are using a different architecture than transformers, and that's what makes them very different. I'm not going to dive too deep into all the details, but if you want me to do a deep dive into LFMs, let me know, and I'm happy to do that. Next, Flux 1.1 is now out. Now, if you don't remember, Flux is the completely open source text to image generation model from a team that was previously at Stability AI. They created this incredible text to image generation model that is open source. It's used by Grok, and now they have version 1.1. Flux 1.1 provides six times faster generation than its predecessor, Flux 1.0, while also improving image quality, prompt adherence, and diversity. Here we can see the ELO scores of different text to image models and Flux 1.1 Pro way up here as the winner. And here's Mid Journey 6.1 right there, Ideogram V2, Ideogram V2 Turbo. So yeah, it basically pretty widely beats the other models. And ELO score as compared to cost, it also still does quite well. So definitely the highest ELO score and about right in the middle of the cost spectrum. And in terms of speed, it's really fast and that's really where it shines. And so it has not only the highest ELO score, but one of the fastest inference times as well. So check it out, let me know what you think. Next, Apple is reportedly releasing iOS 18.1, which is really the Apple intelligence launch later this month, specifically October 28th. I just got an update on the developer beta release last night on my iOS device, but it doesn't include any of the features that we really have come to expect from Apple intelligence. We've seen commercials of incredible functionality where the actress from The Last of Us says, who's this person? Apple intelligence looks through essentially all of her emails and calendars and gets that person's information. Pretty darn impressive. I cannot wait to try this out. I hope it's going to be really great because this is the missing piece of AI in my life. I need AI that will actually be able to accomplish tasks based on things in my personal life, my calendar, my email, my drive, all of these things that I am right now willing to give AI access to. It just hasn't been able to do that quite yet. Now, that isn't to say that the current beta features aren't useful. Actually, one of the most useful ones is notification summaries. So I get a ton of notifications as everybody does. And rather than showing each one, it buckets them all together and then just gives you kind of a two or three sentence summarization of what all of those notifications are. And I've actually find that super useful and use it all the time. I don't use any of the writing tools and I do love the new Siri animation. I've also played around with some of Apple Photos features such as all you do is describe an album and it will grab all of the photos and put together an album for you based on that essentially prompt. But what I really want is that deep integration into my emails, my calendar, et cetera. And hopefully we get that at the end of this month. Next, I already covered this in depth on Friday, but I'm just gonna talk about it briefly. OpenAI released ChatGPT Canvas, which is really a huge upgrade, although it's still pretty basic in functionality. It essentially allows you to do coding and writing tasks in a separate window with all of this additional functionality. So very similar to Claude's artifacts feature, but a little bit more simple. And it's a great step to giving people more ability to create, and use large language models to code and write and just giving the tools necessary for people to do things without having to just prompt everything over and over again. And last, the news is already a bit old, about a week ago, OpenAI has raised the biggest round of private funding in the history of business. They raised $6.6 .6 billion of new funding at a $157 billion post-money valuation to accelerate progress on our mission. Now, there's already been a bunch of drama around this raise. It was rumored that Sam Altman was going to get a massive payday from it, although he denied all of that. It's also been rumored that they told their investors not to invest in other AI companies like Anthropic, but we don't actually have firm confirmation of that either. Either way, they raised a ton of money and they're gonna need it. It seems the relationship between OpenAI and Microsoft is getting ripe with friction. One, if OpenAI ever calls their product AGI, Microsoft no longer gets access to it. Microsoft already owns like 49% of the company. Plus just a couple months ago in a public report, Microsoft declared OpenAI a competitor. So there's just so much to think about in this awkward relationship between 
Microsoft and OpenAI. Plus OpenAI is now moving to become a for-profit and it's just a mess. But either way, they raised a ton of money. And it's also been reported that Microsoft isn't even able to provide enough servers for OpenAI. OpenAI is just eating up all of their resources and Microsoft cannot give it to them fast enough. So I'm gonna keep digging into this story, but for now, that's all we got. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.